Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, I've always been interested in him for various reasons. Uh, of course, the cereal connection. He believed that uh, cereals were very healthy, all for the wrong reason. He thought that it would uh, stop people from uh, having sexual activities. But uh, never mind that. Uh, he also believed in yogurt enemas, and he believed in hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy. He had a very interesting book about this. He believed that virtually every disease could somehow be treated with water. And uh, the book had all kinds of interesting pictures in it, uh, endearing ones like this. Imagine that, going to the San in Battle Creek, Michigan, which was the sanitarium, a uh, name that he coined, and being uh, flooded with water uh, or having jet streams of water directed at you. This was all supposed to be healing. Now, why am I talking about this? Because John Harvey Kellogg was an eminent doctor. People listened to him. They flocked to the sand to be cured of diseases that they never had, despite the fact that there was no evidence for anything that he promoted. There was no evidence that eating cereals curbed sexual desire. There was no evidence of the healing properties of water. People believed in him because he was good at talking. He was eminent. He was famous. Well, the reason I'm talking about this is because these days there's a lot of discussion about evidence-based medicine and eminence-based medicine. We all know what evidence-based medicine is. It's based on scientific studies that have been properly carried out. But unfortunately, today, we have a great deal of eminence-based medicine. We have people like Dr. Oz all over the, uh, the social media. And he's not alone, Stephen Grundy and Deepak Chopra. All of these people are promoting all kinds of things without evidence. Why? Because they're famous, they're eminent. And this is really a curse of social media these days. Well, I, you know, I'm talking about this, and, and as I do that, uh, my scientific hero also comes into the picture. This was Professor Linus Pauling, uh, arguably the greatest chemist of, uh, of the last century. Uh, the textbook he wrote about chemical bonding used by students around the world. He almost got the structure of DNA right before Crick and Watson. And then he delved into another area based totally on his personal evidence and that of his wife, he began to suggest that vitamin C, as found in oranges, was the cure for the common cold. This was absolutely puzzling to me. Here was someone who had forged a career based on evidence, having published scientific papers by the hundreds in peer-reviewed journals. And then he publishes a little book about vitamin C curing the common cold based on nothing except his own thoughts. This is uh, a mixture of evidence-based medicine and eminence-based medicine in one person because the structure he promoted for DNA and the chemical bond ideas were all based on hard evidence, X-ray crystallography, other uh, instrumental methods. And then he comes up with the vitamin C story sort of off the top of his head. So these days we have a problem facing eminence and evidence-based medicine. And we have to put these on the scale. And I think when we do this properly, uh, we have to go for the evidence, never mind the eminence. And as for vitamin C, you know what? Uh, I found that when I take a gram of vitamin C once an hour for four hours, when uh, I feel a cold coming on, seems to curb the cold. But don't take my word for it. I don't have any evidence for it, and I'm not eminent.